I'm here with uh, Gordon Raphael, who's uh, here in Denmark, in Copenhagen, in the Baby Factory Studios. How did you get into the studio business? Um, I started recording my own songs a long, long time ago because I thought the music I was working on was so strange that it would probably be a long time before anyone else would want to record them. But I really was into it, and um, I, w I, w I just basically recorded every day for years and years my own songs and worked mostly by myself with synthesizer, like this one over here, mm. and uh, guitar and voice. And so uh, eventually, years and years later, people started to hear my recordings and asking me if I would work on their recordings. But uh, today, what are your essential bits of gear? Um, today, most of the time, what I really like to use is um, some good microphones and a compressor and uh, a room with people playing instruments in it. I feel that that's the most fun piece of gear that I can use. So Any hints or secrets you want to share about that? Um, well, the biggest hint and secret I know about music and production is that if you're lucky enough to find someone who has good songs and is talented on an instrument, like a good singer or guitar player, it makes the producer's job really fun and interesting and kind of reminds you of why you do music in the first place. But so. can you give an example of how you use the room and the microphone setting to create this, like you, s you call the synthesized yeah, sound um, from the room? Well, when one microphone is placed near a guitar amp or a singer and another one is like tucked in a corner or in a closet with a lot of compression and turned up really loud almost to the point of distortion, it provides a, a, a delay of the space between the two microphones and um, because one's being compressed and one isn't, it sounds very strange, like the walls are breathing or the, the walls are disappearing or expanding and it's a really nice psychological effect. What about the production turns you on? Um, just how it sounds like people are really uh, experimenting in the studio and uh, being using their imagination a lot and also capturing the sounds and putting them in different perspectives the way the drums are sometimes in one side and not stereo like we do everything today and I don't know they also had a lot more limited tracks to use and so the fact that they could create these giant collages of sound with only a few tracks of audio meant a lot of thinking and planning and the techniques had to be used to accomplish that. But what kind of music do you listen to yourself? Uh, a lot of times I listen to the bands I record um, I, I keep on meeting really interesting young musicians from all over the place, Mallorca, Berlin, London, US, and we record songs and I find that what we've done is really interesting. When I first listened to The Strokes, uh, is this it? Yeah. it had this like, wow, this is rough. Uh -huh. uh, it just flew out of the speakers and pounded me in the face. Uh -huh. What was your inspiration for that sound? Um, there's a few things. Um, they asked me to make a record that didn't sound like everything that was being made uh, at the present moment when they met me, which was uh, in 2000 and 2001. So I thought that one of the things that a lot of bands didn't sound like is that they were playing together in a room and their instruments sounded like instruments instead of 20 tracks of guitars all to be one guitar or adding samples of kick drums or things like that to make the drums sound...